balancing my own clutches has uh it's been one of the things I've wanted to do for a long time now. Um, there's no uh, disputing that having a balanced clutch is better for your engine. It's easier on the crankshaft, um, less wear on components. If you need to take a, uh, a clutch down for a rebuild and you need to swap parts around, it's going to need rebalanced after that. Um, you hear horror stories about uh, factory clutches being way out of balance. Now I've experimented before with contraptions such as this fixture that will uh, pinpoint the, the heavy side of a clutch but uh, I could never get the repeatability down too far under 10 grams so it just wasn't cutting it um, but this right here is actually a motorcycle wheel balancer and for about thirty dollars you really couldn't beat this for the uh, the price now all this wheel balancer basically is is a couple of little stands with some bearings attached to them and those support the uh, the main shaft there that has these two mandrels on it and you uh, adjust them with set screws and basically you just clamp your uh, your clutch right in between the two and it centers them up the tolerances on this uh, on the mandrel and the shaft there aren't the tightest but uh, it seems to be working alright so far now one thing that you'll have to do is uh, take the bearings and uh, remove them from that little stand and you're gonna have to remove the grease the heavy grease from inside the bearings um, that causes too much rolling resistance and you just need to use like a little ice pick or something to uh, pop one of the dust shields off and uh, use some brake cleaner or carb cleaner or something and uh, clean most of that grease out of there and this fixture is going to do what's considered a static balance all you're going to do is find which side of the clutch the heavy side is now I'm not going to dispute the fact that a dynamic type of balance is going to be uh, a bit easier and probably better off in the long run. Um, TJ Patrick has a good video on YouTube that shows how that's done and that's like spin balancing a tire. You're gonna find out where the heavy side is, whether it's on this side here, whether it's on this side here. Um, doing a static balance you just find out whether the heavy side is on you know just one side. You don't know if it's on the inner shiv or if it's on the movable shiv. Now when you do this you just move the clutch around and you'll see that it centers itself and it finds the heavy side and when it stops rolling you can mark that side and uh, repeat this over a few different uh, ways you know move your fixture reset it and uh, make sure you can have repeatability in the same spot each time now my solution to uh, putting a good balance with a static type balancing system is to break the clutch completely down and start balancing from the inside out do each piece individually as you can see like most Polaris clutches they've probably been dynamically balanced from the factory and the inner shiv should have already been uh, pre-balanced so the uh, the fixed shivs are usually pretty close but it's always good to double check and make sure once you start swapping parts on the outside movable shiv like the spider and stuff that's when it becomes crucial to do a good rebalance now after you have removed weight from the inner shiv if need be um, place a movable sheave in place with, uh, without any springs or weights and uh, wherever it ends up you'll know that's where you'll have to drill on the outside cover to uh, put it in the balance. You should always make sure that all your fly weights are balanced equally. You can get one of these little gram scales pretty cheap. Your clutch has to be in good working order for uh, to have any repeatability in this type of a balance. Um, if your bushings are shot it's just not gonna you're never gonna get it balanced right you should be wary sometimes of the uh, cheap balancing jobs that are offered on clutches like this if you do a static balance job like you've seen on a complete clutch without removing anything um, it may be somewhat balanced but if your fly weights are out um, and the clutch is in bad mechanical shape to begin with it might not help much if at all you can do secondary clutches the same way um, again, I do them in separate pieces so you can balance each side. Now, just as an example, I uh, taped some counterweight on the clutch just to show how much it would take to uh, to get it in the balance. Uh, once you get the clutch pretty well balanced, it'll uh, you'll be able to pretty much set it anywhere, and it'll just kind of roll to a stop, and it won't settle anywhere.
In this case, the uh, clutch seemed to be out of balance, almost five grams. Now with this setup, I've been able to get it down to um, about three grams within balance. I can get it. Uh, it's about as close as I think you're going to get with uh, the materials that you're using. This TRA is well over 10 grams out of balance. 